Hey everyone, Greg here. As you may know by now, I'm the co-founder and CEO of TripShock, an online reseller for water sports and tours. For the past 12 years, we've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of operators across the country, and we're looking to grow our community. It's free to sign up, and you only pay when we bring you confirmed bookings. We'll help you reach new customers, fill empty seats, and grow your business like so many have done with us over the years. Head over to partners.tripshock.com to learn more about our program, read testimonials, or speak directly with our supply team. As always, thank you for listening and enjoy the show. They come to relax, enjoy the beach, have fun, and spend money. And that's where we come in. This is the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast. Find out tips on the best ways to market and operate a water sports business. If you're a water sports operator, you need to grow your brand, operate more safely, upgrade your operations, and of course, increase bookings. We're industry veterans broadcasting from Destin, Florida. This is the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast, and this is Kevin O'Neill and Greg Fisher. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Episode 8 of the Awkward Water Sports Guy podcast. I'm your host, Greg Fisher. Got Kevin with me. Kevin, how are you? I'm ready to go, man. I'm excited. Ready for Leocho. Leocho. Spanish for number eight. <laughs> yeah. So we, we took a somewhat of a little hiatus the past few weeks. Kevin went on vacation. I went on vacation. And then the industry went on vacation, an unscheduled <laughs> vacation with Hurricane Sally. And now we're back. We got a really great episode. This is one that I don't think enough operators like to talk about. Something that I should be talking about more personally. And I think Kevin feels the same way. And that is uh, stress management. Before we get started, just any stuff that we're about to prescribe, as it were. Obviously, with this the awkward water sports guys pod, podcast, not the you know awkward psychiatrist guys podcast. So. <laughs> Uh, these are things that that we do, that Greg and I do, and it's by it's by no means uh, a perfect fit for any. There's a couple things I'm going to be pretty staunch about. You know, consult your doctor before you get out and exercise. That's 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 one of my things. But 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 Greg had to put me in check. You know, <laughs> we don't want somebody <laughs> going out and joining the CrossFit games and and having a heart attack and and, and uh, saying, well, the you know Kevin said that exercise is fundamental. Yeah, or or changing your diet. Get onto it, man. Yeah. So this this week's episode. Obviously, we're, you know, we're going to talk about stress management, right, Greg? That's right. So I guess, you know, why this topic means a lot to us is because we've been through some low, very lows. I know personally, and Kevin, I think you've shared uh, in a previous call, like about your experience. We've we experienced some very, very low lows and some very high highs in, in our, our time as owning water sport companies, as being in the industry. I mean, this this year alone has been the biggest emotional roller coaster I think I've ever went through with with my company, uh, oh, and yeah. I and I believe people listening are thinking the same thing, thinking that what would I have a business tomorrow? To well, I'm having the best year ever, and that's just it's a lot for just you to even think. I mean, what do you what do you think, Kevin? I mean, it happened so many times <laughs> here, like this 2020, uh, uh, or as I like to call it. Uh, the year of Russian roulette, like, cause that's literally every single morning I woke up, I was like, what's, what's today going to bring plague pestilence? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what, what the fuck is going on, man? So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was, it was a then, crazy year. And then having to deal with all the emotions and all the problems and it's not just emotions personally, but with your employees, your family, you're just watching TV. You know, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I like to watch yeah. the news and every day just hearing, you know, how horrible things are in, in this world. It took, takes a huge toll on, whole toll on you. So we figured this is a perfect time to talk about stress and because it just, I think a lot, there's, there's a lot of egos in our industry, um, unfortunately, and no one wants to show weakness. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, I mean, just again, because like when you say water sports, if you're like talking to the casual, you know, the casual observer, somebody, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do. Like again, and I'll use, I think, I think pontoon boat rental other than, and other than kayak or paddleboard is probably the most benign water sport <laughs> and i love i love that that <laughs> phrase when it comes to boat rentals that somehow north florida boat rentals have got into 
the category of water sports. But people, I mean, I guess to somebody it's sporting. There, if, if it involves an engine uh, of more than ten horsepower, to some people, it can be extremely, uh, it can be extremely scary, and and accidents do happen, and things can happen out there, and so it is inherently kind of scary type of business to be involved in. It's highly litigious. I mean, the first thing my CPA said when we were starting, he's like, you know, due to the extremely litigious nature of your business. And I was just like, yeah, man. I mean, before I started my business, obviously I've got a a pretty uh, steep history in water sports. There's this, I know people who've lost people on their boat and again, snorkeling, extremely benign. And I probably heard more people dying snorkeling than they have anything because they're out there floating mid fifties, have a heart attack. They don't, you know, nobody even knows. And so from jet skis to boat rentals to kayaks, like, I mean, swimming, people drown swimming all the time. So it's one of those things where it's a, it's an industry that's just kind of rife with this, with, uh, with perils that, in addition to being a business owner, you have these sort of these extra worries on top of it. So it's it's generally a pretty stressful business to be in, involved in. And I'll bring it back to the lawsuit thing because it's it's something that you always hear people say. It's not a matter of if, it's when. So in addition to making sure you're you're tax compliant, making sure that you're, you know, the employees are showing up. Like when we did the dry one of this and you and I were talking on the phone, you know, we, we were mm-hmm. talking about, yeah, like the employees not showing up and you're like, oh, God damn it. You know, like all this regular stressful stuff, you know, it was like the other day I was here with my kids and, and the, the key broke off and, and my employee didn't know how to take care of it. So if I didn't go down there and fix it myself, you know, that's just a normal, regular, everyday, you know, headache, stressful of having a business compiled with that of like, you know, again, litigation, somebody possibly getting hurt. Then on top of that, with water sports, you have hurricane season. I can sort of utter the word right now because we're almost at the end of it, or at least uh, at the end of the high season. And then we had COVID. (laughs) It's just like this year, like, man, I've got to take a breath just to even think about it. And it was almost like every day, every day was like that. So, but it was a huge learning curve. When I owned my water sport company in Alabama, every night at 6.30, 7 o'clock, I would just expect a phone call of something. Damage, someone got hurt, employee problems. It's almost like I I got home from from work, you know, when I'm doing trip shot, I come home and I just look at that phone. I'm looking at the phone because I'm like, when is it going to come? It's going to come at 6.45, (laughs) 7.15. Just waiting for it, just waiting for it to call. And and I almost feel like that's worse than actually just being down there. You know, just getting hit with it every day, the little little issues getting hit with every day. And at least you prepare. But when you, you get home and you're just ready to relax, eat dinner, you know, hang out with my family, and I'm just watching that phone. Yeah. <laughs> just and then it comes and then I'm just zoned out for the rest yep. of the evening. Just can't focus because I'm not there. That's a hard thing too. Not there. I'm not. I'm hearing it from somebody else. And uh, one time, uh, one of my employees, he uh, was fixing a jet ski, and uh, I guess there was some uh, some fuel gas, some gas in in the in the wave wave runner chamber. And when he took the battery off, it sparked, and it was a what do you, what do you call that fire chemical burn he had because it just yeah. blew up. And uh, that was one of the seven like, fl- like a, a flash burn. Flash, oh my god! Yeah, that's what it is—a flash, a flash burn. All his hair got burnt off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but I just imagine like 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 a Yosemite Sam type of situation, you know, like cartoon where it, like explodes in his face and just like the guy's like bald and he's just like ah. Oh. Luckily, he's one of the coolest guys ever, and he he basically <laughs> said that I got a chemical peel and I got it for free instead of going to you know, a plastic surgeon to get it. And I, and I just, but he was out for, you know, a few days and he got back in there, but it's, it's, those are the type of things Like I couldn't be there to help him. He's had to make, drive himself to the hospital. And I mean, it, those are just, it, it's extremely hard, not just not being there, but for the most part, dealing with it every day, it, it really takes a, a superhuman people 
especially with all the things that go wrong. I mean, we're not insurance salesmen. So five o'clock hits, we go, no one's calling your phone after five o'clock. Uh, well, when you're, yeah, you, you know, who's man, you know, who said it. And it was like the worst slash best way to describe it is our, our mutual friend, Jason said to me uh, about the jet skis and it was the best way to describe them. But he goes, man, they're like lottery tickets. And I was like, he goes, you could have one and, and hit and have 50 of them and never hit. It's just like, is it going to be your day? And I'm like, man, that is, that is the absolute perfect way to describe it. Cause yeah, man, you could own one and be your only jet ski. You'd be out there riding around, having a good old time and smash. Somebody comes and smashes India and, you know, ruins your day and, or worse. And, you know, you could have 50 of them and be in business for 15 years and never have a, have a single accident because it is, it's just like, it's just dumb luck. And I had an insurance provider or, or uh, insurance uh, carrier say the same thing to me. Because I have these discussions I'm like, Mike, how can, you know, what can I do? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, I filled out this 40 page syllabus about what we do to make sure things are safe. Like, what else can we do? Is there any, anything else that I can do that I'm not doing that? He go and he just said, Kevin, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter what you do. You can, you can have guides, you can have this, you can, you can do anything you want, but no matter what, it's just like owning a motorcycle. They say the same thing it's it, it there's two types of riders that are out there riders that have been down and riders that are going down and it's mm-hmm. it's the nature of the beast but knowing that you know you're right like it's funny that you that said that because usually it's by six but if my phone hasn't rang by six then all has gone well but that's boats i pulled my skis out of the water so no, I was like on uh what do you call that? Like shell shocked when my skis were still in the water. I'd be like, Oh, here it comes. Like I'm just waiting for it, waiting for the call. And then I hear my phone and I'm like, because no none of the employees call you to be like, Hey man, just want to let you know. Everything was great. Nothing <laughs> got broke. Everything, you know, everything's cool. No, you know what? the only reason they call you is to tell you some bad news. I, I almost felt there should be some signal, like at six o'clock, they should call no matter what. To let you know everything is done for the day, everything good. Almost yeah. like just just to, just so I know that there's not going to be a call after that, or so I know. Okay, coast is clear. We're good. Yeah. For so how do we, the the question and the topic? You know, is like how do you how do you deal with that? How do you deal like because there's there's either you become callous and hardened to it, you become that hardened guy that's just like oh you know like you know this is what it is. You know, it's uh, everything will be fun. You know, you spend years perfecting that in negative ways, which a lot of times, unfortunately, knowing my industry, being succumbing to it myself as a lot of it is is alcohol. You know, you, you get when you're a young, young mate or young captain, you get started and you're a part of the, the, the industry and everybody meets up at the same place for happy hour and it starts off uh you know, you're, you're celebrating your, your day or whatever. You made a bunch of good money the tips. You're having drinks. It's a good time. But uh, as a parasail captain, I can tell you, and, and training uh, a lot of parasail captains, it's shell shock. They go from mates and they come in and they're just like on top of the world. They made four or 500 bucks that day. They're just all happy. And then there's a different type of parasailer. It's when they get their license and start flying people and they come in and they just have this like, thousand yard stare and like shell shock on their face and you're just like hey kid how'd it go today and they're just like dude i can't it was like i've never seen anything like it it's like well you have it's just you were a mate before and you weren't paying attention you didn't understand what you were looking at and now you're a captain and uh again i like my it's like you know throughout the par- parasail community and probably like ice road truckers or something like that or pilots they call it when you're when you're butthole puckers when you're like on a crazy landing and the sails like oscillating back and forth and you're trying to get them you know, back onto the back deck of the boat without like smacking them into the side or, you know, stubbing their toe or something like that. And you're just entire body is completely tensed up and you're like, oh, shit, here they come. Boom. They land. I'm like, all right, here we go. Well, now as an entrepreneur, you know, you just kind of have those moments, little smaller ones every single day and they take their toll on you. You know, we, we as, as, as entrepreneurs and captains and, and mates and, you know, people that are in charge of people's lives and finances and our own lives and our own wives and kids and, and households and 
all the stuff that that sort of uh, accrues up in our soul you know how do we deal with that as as adults you know big yeah. big men children and what do you like to do greg for me i like to talk to other people in the industry i don't go to my wife or my dad or even my employees i will if i have something going on i try to find someone that is in a very similar position that has maybe about the same amount of employees that's in the same industry that's doing the same thing because these are the these are the the folks that are going to understand it just as well as you do they're going to understand the stress that's who i like to go to there's a, a few people uh, that i've I work with a trip shock friends that don't work with trip shock, um, but are in the industry doing something slightly different. But I target these guys when I'm having a rough day, I'm calling them and I'm saying, Hey, this is what's going on. And we talk it through. And man, I feel a thousand times better when I get done talking with them. Cause if I go home and I, if I tell my wife about it and I know a lot of guys do <laughs> the co yeah. their wife, they're just going to be like, yep. Okay, yeah, because they hear you complaining all the time about work. They hear you complaining all the time. So they're numb to it. They don't and 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 I not to say my wife does a very good job with other things that we talk about as far as helping me through, but when it comes to work related things, it's hard for her to understand unless you're right there and you're doing it day in and day out. No shade on her or her helping me or my dad or my mom or, or my brothers or whatever, but you have to be in it. it so, you know, man, it, my wife, my wife's like, my wife suffers zero when it comes to that, you know, cause I'll come in, I was like, Oh, fucking this and that and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I just don't know what the hell I'm going to do, you know? And then she was like, yeah, that's cool. Like I had like a, uh, you know, I got a guy shot or something like come in and, <laughs> and, and get coded out. And then like, I brought him back to life, you know, my wife and ER nurse and you know, and, yeah, and Christine's size... like, I, I picked up cat throw up today. <laughs> I, I helped your, your children with five meltdowns. He's like, yeah, I mean, it's don't yeah. worry about it. Like, you, are you asking me what I'm going through? I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he, that, and that's kind of goes, you, your personal life has a whole different subset of problems. You need to talk when you're dealing with something work related, it's stress, something's business related. You got to talk to someone in the same business, someone on the same wavelength, wavelength as you. And it's really important to not make enemies with your competitors. Like I love yeah. Destin for a while. So many guys are all friends. We're competitors, but we're friends. We talk a lot to each other. That's if you're in a, in a, in a location, which there's not a lot of uh, operators, you know, do your best. Unless the guy's like a complete dick, try to make, try to make friends because you never know when something's going to come up and you're going to need, you're going to need to borrow that guy's ear because Man, it's, there's very I, few people. I'll, I'll tell you what, that was the, that was the only time I think during that, the whole thing where I kind of, I remember we talked and, and you sound shook. And you're like over the the last three years that we've known each other, and the countless conversations that that we've had, you've never sounded shook to me. I remember it was like right when COVID first started, and I remember I was in the the tourpreneur group, and there was a couple guys there that was calling for what happened. Like Peter Syme, you know, uh, he's like a consultant, and he owns a couple tour businesses, and like, you know, and I actually called him and talked to him, you know, because I'm like, man, this this guy knew, like, he, I mean, I think he's he's a smart guy, mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's really smart, smart. yeah, yeah, but he, I mean, but I mean, he did not, like, he wasn't pulling any punches, and uh, and I just, I remember 2009, the uh, Gulf oil spill and the recession, and oh, what was it then, the bird flu or what, what the hell ever it was, and I remember Key West just killed it, man. Like we did great. Like I couldn't even get like everyone I knew was getting golf oil money and I couldn't get any because I because I had actually made more money in 2009 than I did in 2008. And so they were like, yeah, you know, you're like you're doing better. <laughs> so I didn't get any money. So I remember just being like incredibly optimistic and being like, you know what, we have survived stuff like this before. And, you know, uh, tourism and travel is recession proof. Like I remember saying that. And then like this being like COVID was like the Bear Stearns you know, meltdown 2008, like travel and tourism got hit harder than any other industry. <laughs> and yeah. I just remember going, God damn, man, I was, I was wrong about that one. And I lost, I did it again. I said, Sally wasn't going to hit us. I made a $50 bet 
that Sally was not going to come anywhere near us. <laughs> and I lost that one. Too. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man. And, uh, and I, so it's like, I am one of those people that, and you know, I, I do believe in the law of attraction and I'll tell you what, like I did obviously make it through COVID no worse to the wear, like out of all of like almost every dock in our Marina got hit pretty hard except for my dock. Like my dock was largely unaffected. Like my T head got smashed where my jet skis are. My jet skis have been pulled out of the water. Like that literally Thursday we got hit with the hurricane. Then uh, Friday we were sold out and all my boats <laughs> rolled out, man. So, and I had to cultivate that. And I'm not so, always the most positive person, but I, I do a lot of reading. So that that's uh, one of the things that I do to kind of reduce my stress. I'm sorry. Yes. What, what were you going to say? Get on in uh, there. So the talk about finding someone in the industry to talk to, that's on, yeah. on your same level. Great way to relieve stress. But bef- before we go into like the eating and the healthy stuff, exercising, because that's a huge part, I think, what we talked about last time that we want to make, make a point about. The thing that the other thing that I, I've noticed over the years, and I'm, I'm still working on this, it's getting tied to my phone and letting my phone use me as like a puppet. Getting rid of the notifications is a huge, huge thing. And also getting rid of apps that can constantly take me back because I'll sometimes I'll I'll get a call from somebody it might be when I get home or even during the day. And then I get caught I answer my phone and I see, oh, look at I got a text message from somebody. They have a question. Now I'm researching it. 30 minutes later, I'm still stuck on that damn thing. And then um, at night. I'm getting text messages and I'm scrolling through um, some of my feeds and now I'm sucked in and then Facebook knows how to keep me and LinkedIn knows how to keep me on there. So they're doing that infinite scroll junk and keeping me in in those apps. And then by the time I know it, I'm, I'm on there at 1130 midnight and I need to be in bed so so I can get the, my full – eight hours, nine hours of sleep, whatever, so I can be back and healthy and ready to go again the next day. Uh, that phone, there's lots of ways, but turning the notifications off is a great start. But looking at that part of, of your business is how important is this phone to the day-to-day, like making sure that that phone does not control you. The light, and it's, you know, we, we t- I, t- I touched on this a little bit last time, but the light that that phone emits is called blue light or or it's commonly referred to as garbage light it's one of the worst lights that you can like what they say like don't read um you know don't read in low light that sort of falls in that same spectrum like a it's incredibly bad for your eyes b what it does to your your brain waves before you fall asleep it active it like triggers first of all your dopamine receptors, social media especially. And, but when you have that phone up against your face like, like that late at night, it can affect your sleep and will affect your sleep throughout that night. It can create rest, restlessness. It can it can affect uh, your REM. Uh, there's a lot of uh, – and, and again, depending on what you're looking at, the psychological aspects of it can be uh, incredibly damaging as well, especially if it's something – you know, it's, it's something negative. Yeah. And, and, and as far as social media is concerned these days, that's all you see. On no, your nothing's worse negativity. than getting a bad review at like midnight. Nothing's worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I, I don't have to deal. I haven't had to deal with that in a long time, but I remember getting that 1130 PM, literally like two paragraph bad review. And now your sleep is just screwed. For the whole night. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, there's this book, man, um, that that I don't recommend enough uh, by a guy named Aubrey Marcus. If the name sounds familiar, it's because he owns a company with uh, called On It. And he, the, a backer with On It is, is Joe Rogan. And so you'll always see Joe Rogan wearing this T-shirt. It's just like the O-N-I-T and it's all like it lo- all looks together. But they do like – they sell like supplements and workout stuff, whatever. Plug his book. It's called Own the Day, Own Your Life. It's an incredible book because it, it, you know, it talks about, it even talks about the cell phone 
in the blue light. Uh, another guy named uh, uh, Dave Asprey, who's a really well-known biohacker. You know, his but looks incredibly old for his age. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm going to live to 100. Like, dude, I don't know. You look like you're 100 regardless. So I, some of these things you have to take with a grain of salt. But I do read a lot of these like optimization books. But I would say that Own the Day, Own Your Life, probably the most modern compact use of one part like positivity mental health how you optimize your day you know things that you need to devote yourself to um whether you're an entrepreneur or you you do work a nine to five if you're a budding entrepreneur if you're getting your business started or uh again if you're just a regular person like looking for some ways that aren't like Western medicine and, you know, antidepressants and stuff like that, because you know I've been down that path too. And I can tell you that. And again, the reason I bring that book up is because it just, it just hits all these different touch points where they talk about, he talks about your phone. He talks about exercise. He talks about supplementation when it comes to uh, vitamins, getting, you know, potassium, magnesium, getting your blood work done more than just once a year doing yeah. it doing it quarterly like doing all these necessary things especially guys that are you know in their mid 30s late 30s early 40s you know starting to get to that age where your stress levels can play a huge role out in every aspect of your life and work and career yeah. so i mean i don't know if we have to go into great detail on on the health, exercising, drinking more water. This is just like any health expert will likely tell somebody getting out and walking a little bit. If you're sitting all day, you know, get out and walking is never a bad thing. Having a more healthy lifestyle is going to help when you do have more stress. It's not going to compound. So if you're extremely unhealthy, you don't exercise and you have a really stressful week, it's going to be twice as worse. Mm. than someone who ha- is living a healthier lifestyle. And there's you can hire a nutritionist, a dietitian. You can get a personal trainer. You can join a gym. You know, you can see a doctor and get advice. There's a lot of things. But stress is way worse when you're unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's and it's, it's funny. And, uh, you know, people don't – it's just like cholesterol. People don't realize there's like good cholesterol and there's bad cholesterol. You know, that like all cholesterol isn't created equal and neither is stress. If you have planned stress put on your body and in your life, and again, meaning exercise, if you go out there and you do things that are hard, it prepares you. And again, I, I'm a huge believer in, in doing some form of exercise in the morning, even if it's 10, 15 minutes stretching, walk, as Greg said, walking outside, I think is being outside, is like, and I know it's like people hate running. I enjoy running. I, I do because it's like two birds, one stone. Yes, I work outside all the time, but I don't feel like it counts, you know, because it's mm-hmm. like, well, I'm outside. Yeah, I'm getting vitamin D. But when I'm outside and I get running and I have my headphones in and I'm just jogging and I'm running down my street and it's a beautiful day in Florida, again, seven in the morning because it's not <laughs> 95 degrees yet. It's like, man, I'm getting in that sunshine, the blue skies, the birds, I'm communing with nature and I'm just being alive and my notifications are off my phone no emails are coming in nothing's chiming in it's just me and music or an inspirational book or a podcast or sometimes nothing at all and i'm just listening to my feet fall on the ground it's like i get to own that 30 45 minutes hour two hours whatever it may be and that's just my time and that prepares me and that puts stress on my body and it hardens me and prepares me for the day. And it and it's and it's like it scales. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it yeah. scales that stress, you know, so, like perfectly. So we have about five more minutes. I have a question for you. And and what are some things you do throughout the day to help relieve that stress while you work while you're working? Because Picard, Picardi one fifty one. Man, come hit me up at five o'clock with a complaint. I will punch you right in the face, man. Get drunk <laughs> as hell. Um, <laughs> I want to talk to the manager. Boom, Muay Thai clinch, knee to the throat. Game over. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, man. Yeah. So it, it depends, man. Like, you know, I practice what I preach all the way up until July, dude. Like July is this like, I am terrible. When it, July, as far as the month goes, I fall apart. And year over year over year, I'm getting like better and better and better at like not letting it control me and, and let it yeah. as much as, as I have in the past. But again, so it's like the morning the, I, I get up and I take, I do my vitamins. I, I, I take my vitamins. I, I take a drink, a glass of water. What about specifically at while at you're work? working while, while it's busy, you know, what are some things like we talked about last time, how, when, when you have a, some pissed off people or you have a situation with your employee, you're not seeing an eye and something just walking away, you know, literally just taking 15, 20 minutes to take a walk. Yeah. Just, you know, uh, look, or you know. Uh, hey, listen, I got to the thing is, is that, that yes, like if if you have that availability, if you yeah. have the means to go, yes, drink water, bring eat, eat healthier. You know, these are things you can do throughout the day. But if you are that guy that right now you're just getting started, you're one, you're two, uh, you're a compulsive workaholic that that can only take 30 minutes out for lunch. The least you can do is when you're setting up your schedule set aside some time before you get started to get that day suit up for armor, to get ready to go to battle. You know, you, you, you're not going to put on your, you, you know, you go to war, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're going to make sure your guns loaded. You're going to make sure you have your body armor on. If that's all you can do, if you're that drawn into work where you are much of a boiler room that you can't get up and walk away. If you can walk away, walk away, literally take that 15 minutes in the middle of the day, Go walk. Tim Ferriss is a big fan of the cat nap. If you can take a fifteen minute cat nap in the middle of your day, I know I'll do that. Now. I'll I'll do that. I'll I'll just if there's just been a lot of the back to back calls, maybe some of them are stressful, argumentative. Luckily, I don't have a lot of that. I just get up and I walk into. I, I have an actual Zen room that my assistant built. I love it. And there's there's lights and candles and a massage chair. Now not everyone's gonna have that. I'm just, but I'm saying. I just get up, and if I didn't have that, I would get up and just walk, walk the building, walk the office building, and do fifteen, twenty minutes. And man, when I when I get in from that, I drink some water, I sit down, I feel so much better. Just that that, that massage minutes, chair, just it's around. like sharper image massage chair is the fucking truth, man. Like at <laughs> first, I was like laughing, you know what I mean? I was like, well, okay, the Zen room, that's okay, that's one thing, but the sharper image massage chair, I can't, but oh my God, I'm melting into this thing. Like I was like, this thing is awesome. I, I gotta yeah. say, man, that is, that is, that is a great, that is a great room, man. I love, I love the Zen room. It's got like little robe lights. It's got like a little, like a rock, like a rock garden, like in a the Buddha front statue. of it. It's like, the Buddha statue <laughs> and the massage chair, man. It's just like I, if I went in that room, I don't know if I could ever come out, man. Like that's <laughs> that's where I'd die in the in the right. massage room. But yeah, so it's, it's it's sometimes it's, you can't get. But there's some guys I know. I know I know they're wound up as tight as I am. And then you got like uh, Ben Merrill. We did an interview with him a couple weeks ago. You know, I talked to this guy at eight thirty in the morning one day. He's uh, he's out playing disc disc golf with Patrick, and and they had like a whole bunch of, you know, uh, DefCon one stuff going on at that with their companies at that time. And they were out, you know, playing disc golf. And I'm like, what are you nuts? Like, how are you playing disc golf right now? He's like, I mean, that's exactly why we need to just get out and chill out. And go do something fun and and, that, and that walk away up for another a second. Topic, just having hobbies unrelated to work. If you are all, if everything you do has to do with your job, you got to get, you got to figure something out. Like you are gonna, your mind's gonna blow blow up. I read medieval fiction. I love medieval fiction. Uh, what? I like, yeah, like Last Kingdom, the Last Kingdom series, uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Like that's like I need, I need to get away, not read something business related. Like I, my mind's already blown up. I need something different. I like, I spend time with my kids and if I did it with my kids, I probably would have some other hobby. I do. I watch my, go to my alumni club every Saturday. I got things other than work just so I can totally disconnect and think about something else. Just stick to my brain. And that's oh very my God, man. Like where I just, I, the things I, I just, I'm so blown away by Medieval fiction, like I just wasn't prepared for that sentence, man. You really caught me off guard with oh medieval my fiction. I love it. That's great, <laughs> man. What's an alumni club? That's something to do with college, right? Yes, um, Central Florida, my university went to college. Were you in a fraternity? 
No, no. This is just a football uh, club wash party that we go to at Harry T's. Okay. Um, All right. Every Saturday. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crash it. I'm going to show come. up. We, we definitely need more. We need I'll more pretend people. like I went to school there. <laughs> They'll be like, I don't remember you, and I'll be like, Yeah, no, we we're in, uh, yeah, we we're in the same uh, history class, and they're like, Yeah, I was in between gym and recess. No, all we you know. all we do is drink beer and, <laughs> and talk, just talk about random stuff. That was a that was, was a good fun. Will Hunting reference, and it totally went oh, over your head. Yeah, probably. You you, you, were, you were watching you were watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> On that thought, let's go into the final. Thoughts, fi- we're, we're, we're about we're about at our time so you can start final thoughts man i'm just I, I i gotta drill home my wife gets after me about it so much because i'm like maybe you should go for a, maybe you should go for a nice jog sweetie and she's like maybe you should shut the fuck up but <laughs> I, exercise man like I, I can't it's like i hate to be that guy but i just like i don't know it saved my life man i used to drink way too much i used to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day i was incredibly unhealthy i was wildly overweight and i i just like exercise is to me the most important thing you can do and it it just it's just a complete game changer and going for the right reasons like remember that like you're going in there because you're 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 going in there because you want to relieve stress you want to make yourself sharper you know, you, you you build mitochondria, increase focus, increase strength, speed, agility, all this stuff, and and all of those things as like a metaphor and everything that's happening in your life. Increase speed and agility in your workplace. Increase strength to be able to handle the challenges, the struggles that you have to go with every single day. And find something that you go in. You don't have to go in and lift weights. You don't have to go run. I do, man. You name it. I'm into. It. I've done CrossFit. I do Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, all sorts of different stuff. So I can't, I can't, like, there's a whole world of exercise and you can do it with your kids as well. Me and my, we got out and we ran for, you know, a mile and a half and she cursed me up and down because she's 13 years <laughs> old. You know, we, 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 we saw pretty quickly there for a moment that we, like, we, there was nothing else that we could do for a short period of time. There was literally nothing. And like seeing so many people out on the streets when COVID was hitting with their families on bike rides, it was literally like, like the, uh, like the awakening or something. I've seen so yeah, many yeah. people on the streets just riding bikes with their families because that was all there was left to do. And guess what? It's probably the best thing you could do rather than sitting on your phone sitting at watching television i don't care how great game of thrones is (laughs) nothing beats a bike ride with your kids so get out get some sunshine get some exercise go swimming at crab island on a boat with destiny water adventures i'm sorry i had to plug (laughs) that it's a perfect time (laughs) well so that's it that's my final thought what's yours yeah so mine's real simple be healthy in both body and mind do something different to get your mind off things like join a gym, read medieval fiction, yes. uh, join a club, whatever. Don't disconnect from your business. Talk to your fellow operators for support. If you're, if you're not friends with any of your fellow operators, start thinking about making friends with them. Email and, us. Yeah, email us. Hey, we'll even be your friend and talk talk to you guys about it. That's especially if, if uh, you're going through something and you need someone to just to bounce ideas off of to help you get through it. We're not therapists. Uh, we're gonna just going to talk to you on a, on a business side of things. If you, if you really need help, we recommend to seek a mental health professional. Yep. Take 15, 20 minutes breaks if you can, if you have that opportunity. If you don't, do what Kevin said and have time in your day where you prepare yourself properly. Don't literally roll out of bed and jump in your car and go. Like that is the worst. Get, yep. have have some time before you you get your day going so you can mentally prepare and that's the same for after you know uh, work too is make sure you have some some drill down time actually i like commuting to work uh, even though a lot of my employees work from home i like that 30 40 minutes i get leaving it gives me Love time it. to kind of just chill out listen to some music i listen to podcasts and i'm ready to go when i when i come home usually so that's all i got for my final thought and that completes episode 8 yo <laughs> And if you have any questions or comments, feedback, hit us up. Um, either you go to our Facebook page, Water Sports of Florida, or uh, hit me up at gfisher at tripshock.com or Kevin at Kevin at destinywateradventures.com. Thanks for joining us and have a great week. Be well, guys. You've been listening to the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast. 
If you're in the water sport industry, this is the podcast that brings the business perspective to parasailing, jet and ski boat rentals, sailing, snorkeling, and everything else. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from this show. Be sure to sign up to our email list at watersportpodcast.com and subscribe in your favorite podcast app. We'll see you next time, and thanks for listening.